Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Ministre, Monsieur le Conseiller des Ministres, les membres du Conseil d'administration, les membres de la Board, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you here this evening. Welcome back to the Principality of Monaco for the 65th edition of the Hollywood Septembre. It's, uh, it's wonderful for me because uh, we have something in common. I have something in common with the Hollywood Septembre because we share the same age. <laughs> I like it to be a little younger, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, it's a great pleasure and uh, it's wonderful to see so, so many of you here and I think in record numbers this year but from what the president told me so I hope you have a very successful uh, week here in, in Monaco. You know our uh, the world is not the same as it was when the first Hollywood September happened. Uh, the world has changed in many many different ways we are faced with many different crises now. Um, and one of them, of course, is the fight against climate change or the climate change crisis, loss of biodiversity crisis, uh, and many others. Um, but this year is uh, its also 31 years ago since uh, the framework convention on climate change was adopted in Rio de the, um, in Rio, in Brazil, uh, and I was there with my father on that occasion. At this time, the climate issue was only raised by a few visionary political decision makers, and especially group scientists in the IPCC, who were beginning to worry about the, the increasing increase on greenhouse gas emissions and its consequences on our climate. Established in 1988 under the aegis of the United Nations Environment Program and the World Meteorological Organization, the IPCC's mission is to provide policymakers with regular scientific assessments of climate change, its implication, its implications, I should say, and potential future risks. Daily we are seeing new and undeniable evidence of these consequences, which every continent on our planet bears the scars. Global temperatures are rising, oceans are warming and acidifying, sea level is rising, Greenland and Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets are melting in unprecedented ways. The glaciers are retreating in a dramatic fashion, and climate related uh, extreme weather events and disasters are multiplying and intensifying. In 2006, a landmark report uh, by Sir Nicholas Stern pointed out that if there was a significant price to pay to reach carbon neutrality by the middle of this century, the cost of, in, of inaction would be, of course, much higher. To put it bluntly, the longer the inaction, the higher the price. Unfortunately, today these figures have proven right. 270 billion US dollars in 2022, this is the estimated cost resulting from natural disasters impacting our global economy. And sadly, the costs for 2023 are set to be much higher, as you are probably all very well aware right now. As insurers and reinsurers, you are act actively aware of these, of these issues and these developments. You are not only aware that our industry bears a large part of the costs of these damages, but you're also the witnesses of the human suffering engendered by these natural disasters and know that the people who suffer the most are the ones with a low economic status. No region in the world is spared by the climate crisis. Climate change is likely the first truly global risk in the history of our civilization. On this matter, the insurance and reinsurance industries have a pivotal role to play, I think for three main reasons. First, it benefits from a deep expertise and knowledge of risk modeling, which is it absolutely instrumental in understanding and quantifying the consequences of climate change. Secondly, it can strongly contribute to the energy transition and the adoption of the low, of low carbon technologies by pursuing strict underwriting and investment policies. Third, your industry plays an instrumental role in protecting people and property against the risks arising from 
the, the, the many disruptions of climate change through its shock absorbing capacity and its fundamental functions of pooling risks globally. And in this regard, the Principality of Monaco is proud to, to, to be host of this 65th edition, which brings together nearly, uh, uh, I think it's 4,000, 4, uh, over 4,000 4, insurance and reinsurance, brokerage and risk management professionals from 80 different countries. As, as you probably know, Monaco was one of the first countries uh, to sign the 1992 Climate Change Convention. And one of my first acts uh, when I took over from my father was to ratify the Kyoto Protocol. My country has a long-standing commitment to fight climate change, protecting, protecting biodiversity and promoting the energy transition. The municipality is applying an exemplary policy on CO2 reductions with a target of 50 55% by 2030, sorry, by 2030, and to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, uh, with of course the 1990 baseline. And we are on a very good track to achieve these goals. In 2006, I founded a foundation to comfortably act against climate change, but uh, uh, to also act on ocean conservation and against the loss of biodiversity, both on land and at sea. Of course, Monaco may only contribute the, to the fight against climate change relatively to its scale, but as we say, little strokes fell great oaks. I have faith in mankind's ability to face this unprecedented challenge, and I remain optimistic. Our prosperity and energy transition are in no way incompatible, and we, and we shall believe a fundamentally positive ecology, creating wealth and job opportunities. We must all act now, together, and we must absolutely remember that our legacy should not be to leave this burden for our children. Uh, this is not a burden for, for our children to bear, nor for our, our grandchildren. It is our moral obligation to, to do as much as we can right now. It is the greatest challenge of this century, and it is up to all of us in our different capacities to take up this challenge and to uh, make it uh, to make it happen and to uh, envisage a brighter future for our, for our children and for the generations that will follow us. So thank you very much. I wish you again a very successful rendezvous, and please enjoy this evening's proceedings. Thank you very much.